Sold as the Alpha King's Breeder Breeder Number 1 Chapter 3 The Alpha of Dragomor Beeping. Low, steady beeping. Why did I smell chemicals? I was trying to understand where I was, but my eyelids were too heavy to lift. My hand rested upon my head. The throbbing was ever so present. It hurt to even think. The fatigue had finally set into my body, and even moving the slightest made me wince in pain. Where was I? I heard whispers in the dark. It sounded like two women were talking. I could barely make out what they were saying, and I didn't recognize their voices. She isn't good. No, I don't think she can. She has to get better first. Conceive. Maybe there is a chance. Pregnancy? I have a supplement that will help. It can carry. Who were they talking about? It sounded like a poor girl with tons of issues. May the moon goddess bless her, I thought. I hoped she got better soon. I didn't mean to eavesdrop on their conversation. Deciding to give them their privacy, I thought back on everything that had happened. However, for a moment, my mind went completely blank. My head hurt again. I still could not open my eyes. But then the memory slowly flowed back to me. That's right. I was the daughter of the Alpha. After my mother passed away, I did everything I could to help take care of my pack and my father. I knew my life was difficult and not the life I should have had, but it was still mine. A few small tears escaped my eyes thinking back to the promise I made so many years ago. Mother made my father and me promise to look after each other. I had done everything I could to care for him over the years, but it seemed that I was never able to do enough to please him, and he just hated who I was. And then, and then he sold me. I took a short breath and clenched my hands. My heart ached so much with that thought that I could not breathe for a few seconds. How could he? I was his only blood-related child, his daughter, and he sold me to an alpha with a ruthless reputation, one who would kill me at any moment. My eyes snapped open, and fear flooded back into me. I had arrived at the Dragomore pack. I remembered how I got into Talon's car, my nervousness and fear coursing through me. Staring out the window, I had watched the shadows beyond the tree line dance about in my vision, with the droplets of rain cascading down the window. Then my vision became blurry, and I must have fallen asleep. Why did I end up in the hospital, though? She should be awake now, one of the female voices said quietly. I suddenly realized that the poor girl was very likely not someone else but me. I held my breath. If they had been talking about me, what did they mean? Pregnancy? Conceive? What did they want from me? My body started to tremble again, and as soon as it did, it hurt. Every move I made was throbbing. I knew that it was the pain from my beatings finally setting in. Talon! Here you are. I was about to bring her some food. She has to be hungry. I didn't know who she was, but she sounded kind. Then do it quickly, Vicky. The Alpha will be here soon. The white curtain close to my bed flew back, and a woman with bright red hair stood there with a bright smile upon her face. All eyes turned towards me, and I scrambled back in the bed. I couldn't move. I realized I was still in my long white dress. Rosalie, it's okay, a brown-haired woman said as she stepped towards me. The smile on her face made me relaxed a little. I'm Dr. Lee, but you can call me Estrella. I looked towards Estrella and recognized her voice. She was the one who mentioned pregnancy earlier. I tried to give her a smile, but I wasn't sure whether I was successful. Before I could say anything, 
the red-haired young woman jumped in. Are you hungry? She was the owner of the other voice, Vicky. I shook my head slowly. I was hungry at first, but now I was too concerned over what I overheard. I felt like I had a knot in my stomach. The Alpha of Dragomor brought me as his maid, or at least that was what they had said. What kind of maid? Poor girl, you look pale. But don't worry, you're going to be all right. Estrella is the best doctor in our pack. She tried to reassure me. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Vicky, Talon's sister. I knew her name from their earlier conversation already, but I was surprised to find out Vicky and Talon were siblings because of their different personalities. Vicky was a very cute and quite chatty, while Talon was quiet most of the time. I'm glad you're awake, Rosalie. I just want to check your vitals quickly, if that's okay. Estrella helped me sit up. As she moved towards me, I flinched, and she held her hands up, trying to show me she meant no harm. I gave her a nod. Seeing no further objections from me, she started to take my temperature. Vicky looked at me with a soft expression as she touched the end of the bed. You really need to try and eat something, Rosalie. You'll feel so much better. I did not have any appetite, still wondering what they were going to do with me, but I wasn't sure what would happen if I disobeyed her. But if you can't right now, just let me know when you're ready and I'll bring you food. I looked at Vicky with appreciation. Thank goodness she didn't seem to be upset with my lack of cooperation. I glanced over and saw Talon. He stood against the wall with his arms crossed, but his eyes never left what Estrella was doing. The tense feeling within my body began to subside, and I was somewhat relieved. They were merciless dragomore wolves, yes, but so far, they hadn't been horrible to me. The awful reputation of this pack was probably all due to the rumors about their evil alpha. This dress is beautiful on you. I can tell it's handmade. Who made it for you? Vicky had changed the topic, and for some reason, I felt like she was trying to cheer me up. When was the last time someone tried to cheer me up? It was a gift from... I couldn't finish my words as I felt tears start to well up again. Vicky, she doesn't want to talk right now. Let's not overwhelm her all at once. Talon finally spoke, looking towards Vicky. She hesitated for a second and let out a sigh before smiling back at me. Oh, he's right. I'm sorry, Rosalie. You need your rest. They were supposed to be killers. So why were they being so nice to me? However, I knew I couldn't rest. May I ask, what kind of work am I supposed to do? I tried to shift the blanket off my body, holding back the pain in my body as I moved. My father had taken their alpha's money, and I needed to work to pay off the debt. I didn't want to be the maid of a dangerous and brutal alpha forever. No one answered me, and I looked up. All of a sudden, everyone stopped talking. Estrella quickly finished up my vital check and put away the equipment, while Vicky moved closer to Talon. Vicky seemed so uncomfortable all of the sudden. Her bubbly and happy nature drained away as she moved closer to Talon. Talon himself was standing up straight like he always does. Even Estrella, who had just been relaxed and carefree, had taken on a more professional demeanor. She stood firm as if she was waiting for her next directive. What was going on? I heard footsteps approaching. Two, maybe three people. A tall, dark figure entered my dimly lit room. He was a giant of a man with tan skin and jet black hair. His jawline was strong and accented the masculinity he held. I had never seen a man move the way he did, graceful yet with a merciless glint that laid behind his gorgeous eyes. He was all the way across the room, but even the aura that seemed to surround him showed the power he held, and it terrified me. I had met dangerous men. My stepbrother Derek, and even my father, had shown me pain throughout my life. 
but neither of them held the same intimidation this man carried. He glanced over me. I couldn't help but notice how his blue eyes seemed to pierce into my very soul. Thud, thud, thud. I could hear my heart beating fast. How could someone be so dangerous, yet alluring? Why did I feel drawn to him? The moment he set foot into the room, it became eerily quiet. So quiet that you could hear a pin drop. I was so captivated with his appearance that it took me a moment to realize the change in the mood from the others around me. Vicky, Talon, and Estrella all had their eyes cast to the floor, and their necks were turned slightly towards him, a common show of submission within wolves. There was only one occasion when I had known wolves to act in this kind of manner, and that was for... Realization sunk in, and I felt myself begin to panic. It was clear as day, and I was so blinded by the sight of him that I didn't notice. This was him, the Alpha of Dragomore.